I'd like to talk about why I'm doing this. I'm not performing. I don't care about performing anymore. In fact, I find this kind of performance disturbing. I was conditioned to be not to be seen or heard, to be in the background, not to make any noise, not to call attention to myself. I would much rather be in the lab adding numbers, <laughs> making graphs, doing research. But I want to do this for one reason. I want everybody to sing. I want everybody to use their voice. I have one more experience to tell you. I went back to school, as I told you, at 45, and was teaching. And one day I was teaching this girl, and her little brother was there, and her mother. And I was demonstrating. And the little boy said, Mama, why is she crying? I can't tell you what an experience that was. I had been this great voice since the age of four. She's going to be a great singer. And I did get to be a great singer. I just didn't like performing. But I realized that if I, I was crying, but everybody cries, why doesn't everybody sing? And then I realized that I should not have been a singer. I was a crier all my life. My father wouldn't let me cry. Chito, don't piange più. He didn't want me to cry because he didn't know what to do about it. He'd given us a home, food, clothing. What more did I need? He didn't know that we needed just sympathy. <laughs> he was an orphan, so he didn't know that we needed love. But I would, I would not cry. I would go. <sighs> and I was strengthening these muscles. <laughs> That's why I was a good singer. I had strengthened these muscles. <laughs> and I promised, after this couple of weeks of this angst, realizing I'd wasted two-thirds of my life doing something I didn't want to do, I would find out what it was I was doing. And I would teach everybody how to do that. Because when you stop and think about it, more people in the world want to sing than do sing. They, I talk to a bank president. I say, everyone has a beautiful voice. And they'll smile and say, not me. You couldn't teach me to sing. And his face says, I want to. But I don't believe I can. Last week in London at the International Conference of Voice Teachers, I had the opportunity to teach 10 minutes of belting. <clears throat> it was Anne-Marie Speed who had a talk. And someone asked her about belting on stage or a loud voice. And she said, well, there's an expert right here. Let her tell you. And I, I was asked to give them a demonstration. And I gave them 10 minutes of yelling. Hey! you know. And I had them all waving their arms. I said, it's in the voices in the hand here. It's in the hand. You have to go like that. And it's in the voice. And they did. They loved it. The rest of the week, all they could do was smile when they looked at me and laughed. I had given them permission to yell. Now, the first thing we do when we're born is yell. And then after that, we're told to shut up. Not to make so much noise. You're driving me crazy. Stop that yelling. And we get the idea that our voice is bad. It gets us into trouble. Our voice is inside us. We're bad inside. And we believe that before we can ever have any other, any other position. And you'll be 35 years old and have to give a talk to the school board or something, and you're scared to make that speech because they'll know how bad you are inside. That's too bad. It's not true. 
First of all, what we should do with our kids is take them out every day at 5 o'clock on the back porch and you make them yell and applaud. Great. They heard you across the street. See if you can do it two, two blocks away. <laughs> and otherwise, show everyone in the world how beautiful they are inside. Because once they know how beautiful they are inside, then there's nothing they can't dream. Nothing they can't dream of doing and do it. And that's what I want you guys to do.